Yes, I realize there are only three weeks left on the fundraising drive. That's why we've got to make as many contacts as we can. Uh-huh. Well, did you talk to him? Yeah. Jerry, everybody's tired. But we're too close to our goal to slow down now. Right. Yeah, I understand that, but... Well, look, all I ask is that you try, okay? All right, thanks. Bye. There dwells within this parish a modern-day apostle and master builder who lists among his tools of trade a Bible, a rosary, and a calculator. His name? Father Mark Cassidy. Age? 42. A fair and noble man who's about to discover one of his accounts is still open. That account is labeled guilt, and it's concealed in a ledger stored in the Twilight Zone. Good morning to you, Father. Breakfast is up, the bacon's cooked and crisp the way you like it. Well, I don't really have time for breakfast, Maggie. I've got a meeting with the Trust Ball Foundation people this morning. But I could sure use a cup of that coffee. You look like you could use a bed. Maggie, please. We need the Foundation's participation in this drive, and I promised the bishop I'd get it. Is that the biggest cup we have? Why not hook up the coffee pot to an IV? Oh, Father, I know, I know. What you do with your life is your business. Thank you. But what you're doing with it is not so good. I gotta go. You're working too hard on this hospital wing. You don't eat right. You need rest. Keep it up, and I'll bet you two bones and a cup of milk you'll be the first person needing a bed when it finally opens. It's a children's wing, Maggie. They won't admit me. And I think you're worse than a child when it comes to taking care of your health. Bell rang, Billy. Well, at least go in out of breath to show you made an effort. Thanks, Father. Call 911. Father Mark, what is it? Father Mark! An accident. Call for help. Call for. I remember that children's wing when it was nothing more than a dream. Monsignor Perot, it's good to see you as always. I look forward to these monthly visits. Gets me out of the city. Makes me feel vital. Oh, do you mind? Oh, no, please. How's the bishop? Delirious. We don't know what you said to the Trustwell Foundation yesterday, but they've been calling all morning, asking, no, demanding, to know what they can do to participate in the building of the hospital wing. Mark, 
I think we're going to reach our goal sooner than we think. Hmm. Are you okay? Oh, yes. <laughs> I guess it's just the shock of all this coming to an end. Well, maybe not too soon. Mrs. Dugan cornered me on the way in. She thinks you've been working too hard. Perfectly all right. I, I work hard, sure, but so do you. Oh, I know I do, but I also enjoy my time off. Mike, in the 20 years I've known you, I've yet to see you take a vacation. There was just too much to be done around here. I know. And if it wasn't for you, St. Timothy's would have closed its doors years ago. But you need a break, and I want you to take one. Monsignor, with all due respect, I couldn't take a break right now even if I wanted to, not with us being so close. But well, Mark, I made a commitment to those children and their parents to build them this wing. They're counting on me. If I'm tired, that's a small price to pay for all the good that will come of it. Please, don't ask me to stop now. Not before we're finished. And Father Damien looked at the leper as though he were his brother. And he took the pipe from the leper's mouth and he put it in his own. Oh, gross. <laughs> well, it sounds awful, I know, but with that one selfless act, Father Damien gave the leper something very precious. He gave him dignity. Now, I'm not suggesting that you go out in the world and help lepers. There are countless other sacrifices you can make in your everyday life that will make you equally worthy in the eyes of the Lord. What's he doing? Father Mark? I'll be right back.
When Father Mark first came to me with the idea to raise money for the children's wing, my reaction was, we better get bigger collection plates. <laughs> Two million dollars. I confess, I had my doubts. But fortunately for all of us, he didn't. Father Mark, it is due to your undying faith and selfless devotion to the children of this community, to all of the people, that we finally reached our goal. The hospital wing will be built. Ooh. And I'm happy to announce that from this day forward, it will be known as the Father Mark Cassidy Children's Wing. This is a, a great honor. I guess I should be happy. I don't know if I deserve this. I know we all know this is an emotional time for all of us, so please, there's refreshments for everyone down in the church basement. These are lovely grounds. I'm surprised you don't make more use of them. There's just no time. <laughs> For people whose business it is to preach eternity, it's ironic that we can't take a little moment to ourselves every now and then. Oh, these roses are special. They were a favorite of a friend of mine. You know, the bishop is singing praises about you. He thinks what you've accomplished here is nothing short of a miracle. Well, please tell the bishop to reserve his praises for somebody more worthy than I. There are very few. Senor, I am only a priest. No, you're a good priest, and God won't think any the less of you if you pat yourself on the back every now and then. I'm not so sure about that. Well, that's a matter for debate, and one that you'll now have plenty of time to reflect on. No, there's still too much to be done around here. Mark, this is not a request. The bishop has ordered you to take a leave. But what about the clothing drive and the pageant and the operating costs? Don't drive yourself so hard. Others can do those things. No, they can't. You don't understand. There's something God wants me to do, something here, right here, and I cannot leave until I find out what it is. What it is? When you came here, St. Timothy's was on the verge of collapse. Now we got a thriving church, a school, a new hospital wing. The parish couldn't have survived without you. You've built a solid foundation. Now St. Timothy's could stand on its own. What about me? What do I do now? God gave you a mission, and you've completed it. Trust him to show you what to do next. death every day. I keep hearing her crying, begging, Mark, help me. It was so senseless. Why her? Why wasn't she thrown from the car instead of me? How could you let it happen to her? It wasn't fair. I was the coward. I saw the flames. I was afraid. I could have saved her. I know I could have saved her. I was afraid. I didn't want to die. So I ran. I know. 
soul, I'm not worthy of your forgiveness. But I ask your mercy. Haven't I atoned enough for what I did? Please, I cannot go on like this. Tell me, why is this happening? Good morning, Father. Yes. Yes. You're looking extremely well this morning, Father. Blessed are the pure in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. A message delivered from thousands of pulpits to millions of people yearning for peace, including one local parish priest whose road to peace and salvation crossed right through the Twilight Zone. 